This video is concerning the history of an image on the internet. You can pause the video and just read the description and ignore everything I have to say, but I'm going to put in the title that the image, called the Backrooms image, was probably a photo taken in the year 2002. In fact, I'm almost absolutely positive at this point, but I could be wrong. Okay, you're watching it. It's your fault. You chose to do this. Things I don't know about the image still. The wallpaper. It may not be wallpaper, it may be a pattern that was painted on using a stencil roller. Someone found an example that's so close that it's probably the same thing. It's not an impossible thing to invent and reinvent repeatedly, and I've noticed that if you look up patterns like it, they all have the same thing, but they don't have a copyright or a patent or a design patent to them. It's just a pattern and it doesn't have an owner. It's been around for a long time and it goes in and out of fashion, and that's it. I can't find any wallpaper for it, and most companies that are advertising wallpaper aren't trying to help you find stuff from the 1800s or whatever, and it may be that old. The keywords I used were seamless, vertical, stripe, vintage, that gives you a clue that it keeps being sold every 20 or 30 years, Aztec, ethnic, tribal, chevron, up arrow, fletching, boho. Those are all style types or names are given. Isn't that cute? As for mono yellow, that actually gets used sometimes as wording. But I don't think it's wallpaper. Or maybe it is. I don't know. So let's move on to what I was able to find out. 1950s air vents. Well, not really. The design for that air vent that you see, top dead center, if it's what I think it is, and it probably is, has been around since the 1950s at least. It's a design that keeps getting used over and over again, but people keep patenting it by design and then getting told they can't do it because it's too old, or because they've improved it. In 1961, the modern accessible suspended drop ceiling was patented and became popular after that point. By 1970s, acoustic tiles were added to it, and that was the default cone diffuser air vent. That's what it's called. I actually found that out. I thought that would totally nail down the time and date stamp. No, it didn't. But then it occurred to me, after I nailed down everything else I'm going to talk about, I should look up the carpet. But let's get the, everything else out of the way. The power socket is from 1973 forward. North America, United States. Everywhere else it was a little later, or much later. The modular office partition, or prefabricated wall, or cubicle expander, or whatever name they gave it, uh, was also 1970s era. Now, also in the 1970s, that type of light fixture was put out, but the most common time it was installed is the 1980s. And like that, 1981. Surface mount wall cable trunking conduit box, the square type. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's in the image. It's that line you see. It's not a decorative thing. That became part of the code for electrical and fire standards and building code standards in a few cities in literally 1981. And a specific date I have on a previous video will tell you about it. But literally, I found the exact date they, they, it was so commonly being installed, they had to make a rule about it. Again, it's based on when things were commonly installed. So the 1980s here is pretty good bet. The lights are actually post-1970s, and the ballast people keep talking about, even though it's implied but not really done in the image. I mean, the image doesn't make any noise. That was 1970s. And yes, I did an entire video and scrapped it about how many years it would have to sit in the ceiling, cycling through high and low temperatures to make that noise. The original image doesn't have any sound with it. We don't have that. The story about it hit buzzing is just based on people's experience. But if you want to know, it takes three years after you install the specific type of ballast you're talking about for it to do that. It has to go through temperature cycles to where the building itself is exposed to outside temperatures of freezing to 114 degrees or 100 degrees or whatever, dynamic range every year for three years. It's obviously irrelevant, but I'm bringing it up. There it is. <clears throat> All of this points to the United States because the United States is the only place in the 80s, through the period of time we're talking about, where all of these existed at once. They weren't standards or acceptable everywhere in Mexico or Canada, and the electrical outlet was used in Mexico and Canada. It narrows it down. It's the United States. Okay, now, JPEG Snoop, version 1.8. I used the latest one I could download to get running that was workable that would give me an answer. Um, and every other copy says that the camera was taken on because of the way it was compressed, and there's evidence of the compression algorithm being copywritten, shows that these were cameras that were made as a hardware piece of equipment from the year 2000 to 2008 at the most extreme range. We're going to narrow it down in a minute. 
Now, the reason that's important and the reason the carpet's important is it's the only thing in the image, again, that is brand new. Everything else is from decades before. But this means it has to be post year 2000. And the only thing in the room that has a consistent enough appearance to look like it was recently washed, therefore the moist carpet meme, is the carpet. Everything else looks like it's been beaten and abused. Some of it looks a little bit new, but not all of it. The carpet installation was being photographed by the people who did it, or the people who were having it done. That's what the image is. It's somebody taking a picture of carpet being installed. The identification narrows down to the year 2001 to 2003. That's an annoyingly narrow number, so I'm going to explain why. Out of all the cameras, two of them were only made in the year 2000. That was the first date. And subsequent dates don't show up as being marketed or sold. They were duds. Three of them were sold after 2005 various year timings. Four of them were from 2001 to 2005. But 12 of the cameras were sold in an overlapping way from 2001 to 2003, which is a very narrow range where all of them existed. Now, again, it could be from 2000 to 2008. But 2002 is right in the middle. That seems like a good explanation. Now we're going to get into personal experience with carpet. I'm going to start at the year 500 BC. Don't watch the rest of the video. 500 BC is the oldest version of a carpet we can find. They were obviously made before then and since then. But particular to it was it was a woven decorative carpet. People, for fashion reasons, will decorate or make things very bland. We're looking at what is commonly called beige carpeting. I'll get to that in a minute. In the 1800s, there were fads. At one time, you'd have a small rug here and there and have really nice looking floors. Then people would just cover them up with carpets because you'd take the carpets out and clean them or swap them out. And then people decided, I want wall to wall carpeting. Stair carpets came out in 2010. Excuse me, 1810, sorry. In 1810, it's a long time ago, people made carpets that were really skinny, you know, like the rolling out the red carpet, and they would just permanently mount them to staircases. It made it quieter. It was pleasant. Uh, stairwells were noisy. But they figured out, hey, if you can make a carpet that's 50 feet long, I can get those 50 foot lengths and chop them up and fill up a room by connecting the edges. And that became popular enough that people did wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. If you do that connection and you don't connect it across the walls, they separate a little bit more. So wall-to-wall -wall became a way to make it look good. By, t by 1870, I keep saying 2000, by 1870, they went back to varnished hardwood floors and woven carpets again. Fashion. So a lot of them became cheap because you'd get used ones, or maybe they just wore out. 1895, the invention of machinery to do tufted carpeting happened. Before that, everything was done by hand doing it, and then you had loom weaving. This was a combination of it where you could make tufted carpets, shag, short, whatever. They started to exist in larger numbers and were used, but there weren't enough of them to lower the price yet, so it was an expensive, high-end item. 1930, mechanization of the tufting equipment expanded and dropped the cost to within range of middle-class people and some businesses. In 1939, right before the war had happened, Roy Roberts invented a tack strip. It's a strip of tacks in it, that's why it's called that, to hold carpet down and make installation really, really consistent. It would look professional, and you could hire unskilled workers and train them fast, and anybody could make it. But he sold the tack strips because then you didn't have to make them. They were made out of the pieces you would put up, wattle and daub type walls. By 1950, machine tufted carpets were 10% of the total house carpeting production, but only 10%. By 1963, they were 50%. And this was because there was an explosion of color carpet crazed products because hippies. 1965, polyester was used, and that jacked up the production even more. Yellow shag dominated offices, hotels, and airports in the 1970s because it was easy to make from polyester. You could make it naturally that color and it wouldn't fade. Yellow. So to tone it down in the 1980s, pale, sandy, yellowish-brown colors began being used because they changed the chemical formulation to make a more fire code compliant. Beige. 
They also made them cut pile or short. That's the carpet you're looking at, 1980s carpet. And I'm saying that literally. Yeah. Dilbert happened <laughs> and made fun of the bright floor and ceiling thing where you couldn't tell where the floor was. So in the 1990s, dark gray brown taupe was more popular to make it to where you knew up from down. Mostly as a response to people making fun of the now dated and ugly looking beige carpets, which started piling up in warehouses and not being sold in the 90s for new installations. 1995 dot-com technology stock market rose. 1999 tufted carpet was still 60% of all new installations, but not the beige stuff. From there till 2000, the tech boom and the Y2K upgrade peak happened. And then 2001, outdated, hard to clean, bad for the lungs, wall-to-wall -wall installations dumped. So did the economy. In 2002, the tech bubble, venture capitalists stopped giving money, and interior wall-to-wall -wall was out again. Lots of businesses emptied out of big business buildings. The only time you put new carpeting in is after they leave and you put in new for the, for the customers. So there's a bunch of this flooring with taupe or beige or whatever that got to sit there until somebody wanted to rent the place out and then they would strip it out. But more importantly, nobody was buying carpet from 2002 for many, many years. And they had old stock for, for beige from the 1980s. In 2002, I was working at a place that took uh, surplus material. We got four tractor trailer loads, doubles, filled with beige carpet and had to get rid of it. These things were folded in half and jammed in. They were big. And they had time and date stamps from 1983 to 1985. Because that's when they were made. But it was 10 cents on the dollar, and if you wanted to buy cheap carpet to do a new office anytime after the year 2002, you bought that stuff and did it. Lots of people did. They carpeted all sorts of places, mostly mid-level small businesses and some big buildings. But it was in areas where they were having a tech boom coming up. Now that narrows down where this photo was taken, but not the year. It was 2002. Past that, so we have 2002 to 2003, a narrow range all the way up to 2008. Now, material overrun people like a we all talked behind the scenes through, you know, gabbing and whatever. Hundreds and hundreds of large businesses that were involved in buying up buildings that were going bust and then redoing them did so with brand new carpet that was beige. The reason was is that biochemically it wouldn't retain bacteria and fungus. It didn't wear out if it was inside. You could turn off the lights. And all you had to do is keep the temperature above one temperature and below another, and it wouldn't rot. And all you had to do was skin every building completely down, put in the wall-to-wall, -wall, put in the outlets and everything, and just let it sit. It was presentable. If somebody wanted to move in, they could. But if they left, it was easy to take care of because they didn't stay there long enough to stain it. That's 2002. And then after 2003, approximately, there wasn't any available. Now, I want to point out something. How many of you had a cat tree covered with beige carpet? What year was it made? Do you still have it? Look on the back of it and see if it has a time and date stamp. It'll be the 80s. I'm an idiot because I helped sell the shit and I knew this. The last thing I looked up, of course, is the one that narrows it down the most. It was 2002, most likely. That's when the install would happen. Again, it's an image of someone installing carpet, and the only time it would be installed after a period of time where all these things could be in place with the cameras working is 2002. It's almost exclusively. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And this was brought on by somebody claiming it was a 1998 image on a Canon Sure Shot. It wasn't.